Good afternoon. Welcome to Adaptive Architectures and Smart Materials. My name is Eric Howler. I'm an assistant professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Design. Um, this conference is our first event in the GSD Merck uh, Technologies for Buildings uh, initiative. Um, this initiative looks at new materials uh, and new building technologies and sees how we can use those to impact architecture in the city. Um, for the GSD, welcome alumni. Um, in case you didn't know, GSD is a preeminent architecture school in the country and a design leader around the world. Merck KGAA is a pharmaceutical, chem uh, pharmaceutical chemistry and life sciences company based in Darmstadt, Germany. So you might ask, what do these two institutions have in common? As it turns out, quite a bit. Uh, at the GSD, we interrogate material of architecture, asking what it could be, how it acts in the world, how it communicates, and how it performs. At Merck, they investigate materials at the chemical level, the architecture of materials, asking what they could be, how they act in the world, how they communicate, and how they perform. Both institutions have an intense interest in the material world, how they perform, and how they influence our daily lives. Merck produces thousands of materials that are already inside our built environment. Pigments, OLED lighting, photovoltaics, liquid crystals. You probably have some Merck in your pocket right now, in every phone, probably. Um, these are technologies that color, illuminate, generate power, and communicate. So we asked, how could advancements in materials at the chemical level impact architecture in cities? How could these issues of material culture and design intersect to create an initiative that would engage designers in the GSD community and sponsor a dialogue between industry, academy, the profession, and how do we put these ideas into practice? These were the questions that led to the forming of the Merck GSD Technologies for Building Initiative. So the topic of today's conference is adaptive architectures and smart materials. Uh, adaptability is the means by which organisms respond to their environments, or how individuals interact with each other, or how new technologies are absorbed into culture. The integration of new communication, interactivity, and display technologies in architecture have fundamentally transformed spaces and places into networked, responsive, and communicative environments. Adaptive architectures are spaces capable of interactions with their environmental and social contexts. So contemporary material culture is increasingly concerned with sensing and control. As objects and materials become enhanced, their properties become variable, surface properties may change, they may signal other objects, they may alter their behavior and their performance. As these elements of our built environment become adaptive, transforming and connecting to form a smart network of things, this transforms architecture from what we typically assume to be a static thing into something highly dynamic almost animate. So adaptability then is an indicator of intelligence or liveness in architecture. So to talk about these topics, we've gathered a distinguished group of architects, historians, engineers, curators, and critics to discuss the topics over the next day and a half. Um, as I was assembling this list of speakers, I was saying it's kind of like a fantasy football team. I can invite all my favorite players, and I could have them come and talk about these topics uh, of architecture and adaptability. So I'm delighted that they've accepted my invitation, uh, and I look forward to the presentations and the panel discussions. Uh, but first, my privilege is to um, welcome a representative from Merck KGAA, our partner in this initiative, 
and tell us a bit more about Merck and their role in the architecture of materials. Inez Lowenstein is the head of the display materials section at Merck Performance Materials Group. Inez has degrees in business and engineering from Riga Technical University and degrees in uh, and an MBA from the Walter Haas School of Business at the University of California, Berkeley. So please join me in welcoming Inez Lowenstein. Dear Dean Master Pavi, Professor Howler, distinguished speakers and guests, thank you for providing Mark the opportunity to join the discussion about smart materials and adaptive architectures. I really look forward to the next two days. And I think it is, as was said, a great opportunity to bring together academia and business. So bringing together the most ambitious risk-taking and optimistic design school, Harvard University Graduate School of Design, together with a company that is a leader in high-tech materials world, Merck. I guess everyone knows Harvard, but as it was indicated, I think it may be a surprise for you to know that um, probably everyone in the room today has Merck technology in their pocket. So let me share a little bit about who Merck is. Founded in 1668, so that's right, nearly 350-year-old company from Germany, we are the oldest pharmaceutical and chemical company in the world. And this year, the US subsidiary of our company is celebrating 125-year anniversary. But I'm happy to say that old age does not show one bit, and the company is still one of the forerunners in the league of innovative high technology products, materials, with a global footprint and a highly diversified business portfolio. Merck from Germany is mostly known as a pharmaceutical company used to treat cancer, multiple sclerosis, and other diseases. More than two million babies were born thanks to infertility treatment from Merck. In addition, we are one of the largest producers of products and services for the life science industry. The range of over 60,000 products, you'll find anything from water purification systems to sterile filters used to make our medicines safe. We also provide effect pigments that you can find in automotive, printing, plastics, and other applications, as well as on the interiors and exteriors of our buildings. But there is another area in which we are the hidden champion, and I'm happy to see, as I said, so many customers today. You see, we are the global market leader in liquid crystals and other display materials that are used in smartphones, in PCs, in TVs. And from our, from our Europe pockets, from living rooms and offices, we hope to inspire an even bigger vision beyond the capacities of a small display, partnering with the most exciting architecture school in the world and bringing together leading professionals and experts in the field, we'd like to explore, explore future applications of our materials in architectural settings. From transparent displays to OLED wallpaper, from organic photovoltaic facades to exciting effect pigments, and to liquid crystal windows. Merck is focused on, as I mentioned, highly specialized businesses. And here, innovation can only happen in close collaboration with our customers. That has been the key to our past and will be a key to our future success. But we also work in close collaboration with academia. Let me share one story, which is an example of such collaboration. This story dates back to 1888, when a prof university professor, Friedrich Ranitzer, stumbled upon a new substance, liquid crystals, and he found them in carrots, in fact. Um, other academics joined the research effort, and actually it was Merck who supported their early lab work by supplying liquid crystalline substances of high purity. However, at that time, no one could think of a practical use for these 
liquid crystals. And then it took almost 80 years until in the 1960s, the electro-optical effects of liquid crystals were discovered. And this was the missing key to producing first liquid, dis uh, liquid crystal displays. And once market marketable applications had been found, at first it was pocket calculators and electronic watches, um, the industri industrial side of liquid crystal research really took off. And that brought us to the forefront of display industry and innovation. Since these early days, display technology has continued to evolve. And today, us as users can enjoy really high definition, high resolution, bright, fantastic displays. But we're still not satisfied and are thinking about how to make them more robust, transparent, foldable, wearable just to name a few ideas that Merck's working on with our customers. And one amazing but very concrete endeavor that we are excited also to showcase during this event is liquid crystal windows. You can see them in the exhibit hall downstairs. The liquid crystal windows have the potential to optimize the amount of light that enters the building, as well as reducing thermal impact on glass surfaces in the future and therefore conserving significant amounts of energy and providing a comfortable environment for those inside without the need for traditional shading solutions, which obstruct the view and can also have a negative uh, um, impact on our architectural appeal of a building facade. So let me encourage you to see our, our exhibit. Uh, my colleagues will be happy to explain the technology behind liquid crystal windows as well as the other products we've brought to this event. To close, I'm excited about the next two days and look forward to fruitful exchange of visions and ideas. It's safe to say that business uh, sector and academia have different cultures, mentalities, and sometimes expectations. But it is precisely these differences that make for a really interesting uh, and productive conversation. And I'm con convinced we can learn a lot from each other. So thanks once again to the organizers. Um, for and the, and the teams who have put together this event. With this, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I'd like to welcome to the stage the Dean of Harvard University Graduate School of Design and Alexander Victoria Valley Professor of Design, Dean Mostafavi. Thank you. Thank you so much, Inez. I, I just want to take a couple of minutes to welcome you all to what I think promises to be a wonderful uh, couple of days. Uh, really, thanks very much to uh, all of our colleagues uh, from Merck. Um, I think this is a project that goes back at least a year and a half or so uh, when we started working on uh, our uh, collaboration. And I'm really delighted that we're finally here together. Um, I think this will be uh, the beginning of, uh, of, of, of an important uh, collaboration in the years to come. Um, of course, this collaboration wouldn't have been possible without the incredible dedication that uh, Professor Eric Howler has given to this particular project and has really followed it through from day one. So, Eric, thank you very much. I think your leadership for this um, issue and also the whole idea of your uh, favorite football team, I think getting your team together uh, is something that we're very proud of. And, and thanks very much to all the wonderful players of uh, of this incredible team. I, I'm, I'm really uh, grateful f uh, to all the speakers for, uh, for making it here uh, today and, uh, and tomorrow. Um, this uh, type of event also builds on the idea of the GSD doing uh, events around the country, indeed around the world. We have already had um, uh, an interesting event in LA, followed by one in uh, Hong Kong, uh, more recently something in Miami and now in Chicago. Essentially, uh, it's a platform to, to invite some of our alumni and friends also to join us around some key topics and key issues. So we're, we're very glad that really the, the concept of adaptability and smart materials is the, is the theme that brings uh, many of you here uh, today and uh, tomorrow. Uh, this issue is something that um, that is obviously very much at the heart of the kinds of investigations that are going on uh, at the school. Um, I myself have been interested in, 
in a different way in this question of, of buildings and their surfaces and so on for, for, a, for a long time. And I think part of uh, the, 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 the topic that's going on in architecture, which is interesting, is that uh, in recent years, we've come to, to have to consider in a way that the use of materials and the way that they relate to the making of buildings in different ways. We could speak of a time when in a way using, uh, using wood or timber for building construction um, had a certain kind of look that went with it. That was the logic of constructing with timber. Uh, we could say the same thing about brick and then later on about concrete. I think what is exciting today is that materials are in a state of suspension, if you can say it like that, that the, the, the singular kind of association between one material and a certain kind of look is no longer something that is the end of that particular material. Uh, therefore, um, even though we're now dealing with smart materials today, uh, it's fair to say that brick is also a kind of new material or could be seen to be a kind of new material today, the same way that, that, uh, that we've been experimenting at the GSD with wood and uh, the way that wood also could have different kinds of properties to what it used to have. So I think what's exciting about the, the topic and, and what we are going to hear from all of our presenters is precisely um, the investigations both from a, from a technical and technological perspective, but there are also possible architectures in a way that could be the consequence of this. I think we don't always know what are the, what are the architectural possibilities. And I think hearing uh, our speakers, uh, you know, in a way review some of that uh, possibility. In some ways we could say that if um, before we were dealing with the idea of the form of architecture and then we were dealing, uh, on, you know, in a sense on the relationship between the body of the building and its surfaces, today we're dealing with the idea of buildings and the making of buildings in a way that the surface has also a kind of depth. And that depth, whether it's virtual or, or actual, is, the, is also the space of, of reflection uh, to some degree. So um, it, would be very, um, it would be very valuable in some ways to, to see this both as part of a new form of collaboration between um, technology and, uh, and design, uh, but also really the, the possibility for thinking uh, architecture in some way differently in response to these developments. Finally, I would say that we're very happy from an academic point of view to be uh, pushing this kind of investigation further. Recently, in the last uh, couple of weeks, we have announced the creation of a new master's degree at Harvard which is a new master's degree on design engineering. And it's a degree that is being developed in collaboration uh, with the Paulson School, uh, the C's, the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences at Harvard. So together we are creating this particular degree. So I actually think that this conference, for example, is an incredible uh, fit in a way uh, in relation to the kind of issues and ideas that will be developed um, during the, uh, the coming years as part of this Master's in Design Engineering where we bring engineers and designers together to really rethink both um, big kind of creative issues as well as big social issues uh, that could have significant impact in terms of the transformation of the built environment. So once again, thanks to all of you for being here and, and thank you to Merck for really making this conference and this gathering possible. I'm looking forward to the next session and of course to, to all the other sessions tomorrow. Thanks again.